on the sixth day of September, 1869. Those miners all them got a call to go work in the mine. But My name is Tom Soupy Jr. I'm a third generation coal miner. I started when I was about 22 years of age. So that gives me like 40 years experience in the mine. It's still a big part of our heritage and we, you know, we feel strongly about it that it should be preserved so that future generations could know the hardships and the trials and tribulations what the miners went through to make a living just to put food on their table. to their work, likewise every boy, but a dismal sight in broad daylight soon made them turn pale when they saw the breaker burning o'er the mines of Avondale. This is used for detecting uh, two kind of gases in a coal mine. One is carbon monoxide, which is called black damp. And what it is, it's air without the proper oxygen. Now our atmosphere contains 20.9% oxygen. This lamp will go out at about 16%. When this lamp goes out, you must immediately proceed to fresh air, otherwise you'll be overcome and die without the proper oxygen. The other gas also checked for is called methane. It comes from the formation of coal, tasteless, odorless, lighter than air, found up near the roof of the ceiling. When you come into methane, the flame grows very large. Now with black damp or carbon monoxide, it's just the opposite, carbon dioxide. It goes down and the, and the flame will eventually go out. But before that flame goes out, you'll feel it on your lungs, it'll become difficult to breathe. Methane is just the opposite, that's high up in the air and that rises and what happens actually um, it takes your breath away the same way and it can be very explosive. Now we have no methane in this particular mine. The mines in the Scranton area were literally methane free up here. Not so the case down in Wilkesbury and Nanticoke. Many explosions and men were injured or killed because of explosions and fires. Get out our husbands and our sons that he's going to steal. Their lives away Black lung was, was um, the kind of disease that didn't affect everybody the same. Um, unfortunately, we knew a lot of people that had it, and some people had it worse than others. Some people, by the time they were 48 or 50 years old, they were finished. They couldn't work anymore because they couldn't breathe. Where other men worked up until they were 60, 62 years old. It depended on what kind of exposure they had. Um, to what kind of dust, if it was rock dust, which was worse than coal dust. Um, a lot of places they drove rock tunnels to get to the coal, and then when they went through those rock tunnels, it was like breathing in talcum powder, and that really afflicted your lungs a lot worse than regular coal dust. But it was a sad disease. It was, this kind of weather that we have right now, hot, humid weather, it was terrible because you couldn't get a breath of air, maybe in 10 breaths. They would be on oxygen, and they didn't have all the, the machines to help them breathe like they have today. They simply would sit in a chair and sleep. They could never lay down because they wouldn't get enough air. And a lot of them smoked, unfortunately. They didn't know the damage they were doing to themselves by smoking. They were heavy drinkers, they were heavy smokers, and that shortened their lives a lot quicker than some of the men that didn't, too. For there is no second outlet from the subterranean cave. The biggest no cause of injury and deaths was roof falls. You see, when you dig out the earth, you weaken the earth. So you have to make sure that that roof is safe that you're going to be working under. You have to put supports up every five feet. And if it's really a bad roof, then you must put three piece sets of timber up and make it even safer than that. Because there's no guardian angels, you have to take care of yourself. And in the olden days, that was the way the miners learned. They learned from debts, they learned from accidents, and they had to take care of themselves because there was nobody to take care of their families if they were injured or killed. So there were no mining schools that actually taught a lot of this stuff. It was kind of a hands-on operation that you learned by being an apprentice or a laborer and then becoming a miner. When at the bottom they arrived and thought to make their way one of them died for one In every working place there was a miner and a laborer. Now everyone was a laborer that came into the mines. There were various different jobs like track layers, timbermen, 
Bradishman, just to name a few. The miner was the person in charge of his place and he was the only one that could handle or blast with dynamite. A labor could not. So you had to be a labor for two years, then you went and received mining papers after taking a test and you were given a miner certificate. Miners and laborers became very close-knit. They were like brothers. They worked in dangerous conditions, they worked in good conditions, they worked in poor conditions together. They worked sometimes sick. One of them was sick, didn't work, didn't feel good, but he came to work anyway because there were no paid holidays. So the miner would carry him maybe a little bit more on a day that he didn't feel good and make sure that he got his day's pay. But the families were even intertwined. Many of them remarried, intermarried, um, became very close, close at holiday time, vacation together. They visited each other on the weekends. They went out, uh, they played cards. They did things like that. They shared if they were the same ethnicity, which they usually were, but not all the time. They shared their uh, traditions together, you know, their holiday meals and things like that. To hoist him up to tell the dreadful tale. There were actually 27 different ethnic groups in the anthracite region. It's hard to believe, but there were. Now, the majority of them were the Polish and Slovak, the Irish, the English, the Welsh, the Italians, um, the Lithuanians. I had two sets of grandparents come through Ellis Island and make their way with just everything they had in a suitcase. Now you talk about courage, that's, that's, that's pretty courageous as far as I'm concerned, to leave your family, maybe never see them again, and look to start a new life. And so many of them came here and thought that it was gonna be the streets paved with gold, but it wasn't. It was harder than what they had it in the old country sometimes. But they toughed it out, and they made it better, and they made the future generations better because we appreciated what they went through to make us better people. They found the father with his son clasping his arms so pain. It was a heart-rendering scene in the minds of Avondale. Now to conclude and make an end, their number I'll pin down. A hundred and ten all stray brown men were smothered underground. They're in their graves till this last day. They're with those maybe way. And the orphans cry. They rend the skies all around through Avondale.